my dear students in the today's session we are going to discuss about the chemical properties of carbon compounds yes let's get started now we are going to study how these carbon compounds react with other substances the first reaction that we are going to study is combustion you have heard this name in your junior classes yes carbon burns in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide along with the release of heat and light so what do we mean by combustion what do we mean by combustion combustion means it is burning when a substance burn in the presence of oxygen we call that process is called as combustion yes combustion means burning burning of substance in presence of oxygen carbon and its compounds burn in the presence of oxygen to release large amount of heat and light when carbon is burnt in the presence of oxygen it forms carbon dioxide and along with the formation of carbon dioxide it releases large amount of heat and light this is oxidation reaction here yes and the compounds of carbon that is hydrocarbons they also undergo combustion to release carbon dioxide along with carbon dioxide they release water as hydrogen is present here it is also oxidized to water along with it there is a release of heat and light all carbon compounds that is hydrocarbons they will burn in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide water and also they release heat and light this is ethanol it will burn in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide water along with heat and light you can balance these equations yes there are six hydrogens here so i should get six hydrogens here also here there are 2 to the 4 4 plus 3 seven oxygen atoms here so here also i should get seven oxygen atoms so this equation is balanced in this way the compounds of carbon that is hydrocarbons they will undergo combustion reaction to form carbon dioxide water with the release of large amount of heat and light yes combustion is in simple words it is burning of a substance in presence of oxygen yes and you can see here what type of reactions all these they are exothermic reactions as there is release of energy in the form of heat and light it is exothermic reaction and when these hydrocarbons burn they will burn with a flame yes what type of flame it will be it depends on the type of hydrocarbon yes in case of saturated hydrocarbons we will see a clean blue colored flame whereas in case of unsaturated hydrocarbons we will see a yellow smoky flame yes basically we know that there are two types of hydrocarbons saturated hydrocarbons and unsaturated hydrocarbons these saturated hydrocarbons will give a clean blue colored flame they burn with clean blue flame whereas unsaturated compounds they will burn with yellow flame that is smoky why does this happens these saturated hydrocarbons they will give clean flame because it is due to the complete combustion of the hydrocarbon when there is no complete combustion that is when there is incomplete combustion it will result in the formation of soot what is that soot it is a black colored substance that you can see when there is flame for example naphthalene balls when the naphthalene small cubes or balls they are burnt you can easily see there is a soot that can be absorbed why does this happen it is due to the incomplete combustion of the matter there in case of saturated hydrocarbons that is in your kitchen you might have seen we will use lpg gas stoves when lpg is burnt it will give clean flame it is giving clean flame blue color flame you can easily absorb there is no soot there because it consists of saturated hydrocarbons and also there is a complete combustion taking place and sometimes you might also have observed that there is a black color material that is formed behind at the bottom of the vessels when they are kept on the burner of this lpg stoves why does this happen even though they are giving clean flame why is 
that soot formed there it is due to the blockage of the air holes on the burner you might have seen on the burner of lpg stoves there are many number of holes that are made why these holes are made in order to supply air to the mixture of lpg so that it can burn easily in the presence of oxygen to give energy to give heat energy there yes and when these holes are blocked somewhat they are blocked this results in insufficient supply of oxygen again insufficient supply of oxygen result in the sooty flame due to the incomplete combustion yes generally saturated hydrocarbons give clean flame but in case if there is insufficient supply of oxygen they will form sooty flame yes and in case of unsaturated hydrocarbons they will burn with yellow flame that is smoky this is due to the incomplete combustion why does this happens because in case of saturated hydrocarbons percentage of carbon is less when compared to the unsaturated hydrocarbons here the percentage of carbon is more when the percentage of carbon is more means it needs more amount of oxygen for burning and the atmospheric oxygen is not enough to cause the complete combustion here it consists of less percentage of carbon which is sufficient for complete combustion resulting in the clean flame whereas here the oxygen that is present in air it is not that enough in order to cause the complete combustion because of which they will give sooty flame and in case of saturated hydrocarbons when there is limited supply of oxygen they will also give some smoky flame yes and when we talk about flame do all the substance burn by giving out flame have you seen each and every substance that gives out flame on burning the answer is no because there are some substance like you might have seen coal or wood they will not completely burn by giving flame initially they may give flame but after you might have seen that it will glow red when it is burning why does this happen flame is produced only when the substance is in the gaseous state yes flame is pro produced when the gaseous substance is formed in case of candle you might have seen first the wax get melted and its vapor will catch fire in order to give out the flame whereas in case of coal or wood what happens there is no gaseous substance that is formed there initially it will burn with flame because of the volatile substances that are present once those volatile substances or gases are burnt away then it will only glow red as there is no formation of gas there and it is to be noted that in some fuels like coal and petroleum they contain sulfur and nitrogen elements once they are burned they will give oxides of sulfur and nitrogen and these are the pollutants in the atmosphere why do we say that when petrol and diesel they are burnt it will produce the polluting gases because of the presence of sulfur and nitrogen in those fuels so far we have learned that the combustion results from burning of a substance in presence of oxygen all the compounds of carbon will burn in the presence of oxygen to give carbon dioxide water along with heat and light and the saturated hydrocarbons will burn with clean flame due to the complete combustion and the unsaturated hydrocarbon will burn with a low color flame that is smoky it is due to the incomplete combustion and in some materials the flame is not produced flame is produced only when gaseous substance is burnt this is all about the combustion reaction now the next type of reaction that carbon compounds undergo is oxidation reaction what is oxidation it is addition of oxygen to the compound we have learnt it in the previous sections addition of oxygen to a compound is called oxidation let's see the example here when this alcohol is oxidized we get carboxylic acid and for this oxidation we need reagent that is oxidizing agents 
what are these these are the oxidizing agent in order to carry out the oxidation process that is oxidizing this compound we need the reagent what are those reagents they are oxidizing agent which are capable of adding oxygen you can see here initially it was having one oxygen in the product it is having two oxygen atoms so there is addition of oxygen here because of which we will call it as oxidation reaction and this substance is oxidized from ethanol this is ethanol and this is ethanoic acid and those substances which oxidize another substance they are called as oxidizing agent you might wonder in the previous case also there was oxidation taking place where oxygen was adding to carbon resulting in carbon dioxide the difference is that in case of combustion reaction they will burn completely the reaction is vigorous resulting in the carbon dioxide water heat and light here we are adding oxygen in a controlled way we are not burning the compound here in the previous case we were burning the compound that is combustion here we are adding oxygen to this compound in a controlled way to form oxidation reaction in this case we will require the suitable oxidizing agents these two are oxidizing agent that is potassium dichromate this is potassium dichromate and this is potassium permanganate you should remember the oxidizing agents what has happened here in case of oxidation the carbon compounds will undergo oxidation in the presence of oxidizing agents to form the respective oxidized products yes in case of ethanol it is oxidized to ethanoic acid this is ethanoic acid this is about oxidation reaction i am remember here these both are not used at a time any of the oxidizing agent can be used either acidified potassium dichromate or alkaline kmno4 any of these oxidizing agents can be used in this type of reaction the unsaturated hydrocarbons react with some substance to form a single product the name itself indicates it is addition there is addition of some molecules or atoms here let's see the example suppose this is alkene in alkene we know that there is a presence of double bond and this r r r r represents they are alkyl groups they may be ch3 they may be c2h5 c3h7 in this way they are alkyl groups now we are focusing on the double bond here because we are adding the molecule to this double bond what happens when hydrogen is added to this double bond we get hydrogenated product this hydrogen will attack this bond the double bond is broken and hydrogen atom is added to both the carbon atoms here so this bond is broken and the bond is formed between the carbon and hydrogen here and for this reaction we require the catalyst nickel or palladium may be used as catalyst what is catalyst catalyst is a substance which is added in order to increase or decrease the rate of reaction suppose i want to speed the reaction i will add catalyst here and catalyst is not always added for increasing the rate it may also be added for decreasing the rate of reaction and at the end this is not involved in the product this comes as it is as it was before so it is called as catalyst what it does is it will alter the rate of reaction it will sometimes speed up the reaction and wherever necessary it can also be used to slow down the reaction process so here in case of the addition reaction here this hydrogen molecule is added to the double bond here each hydrogen atom is added to carbon and this carbon also and this bond is broken and we know that carbon can form only four bonds so this bond is broken and hydrogen is added to here and for adding this hydrogen we need the catalyst like nickel or palladium and here it has undergone the reduction reaction addition of hydrogen is nothing but reduction and this reaction is also called as hydrogenation as we are adding hydrogen to this molecule we call this reaction as hydrogenation reaction 
is there any practical application of this reaction yes in conversion of vegetable oils into vegetable fats we are carrying out this reaction in the conversion of vegetable oils to vegetable fat we are carrying out hydrogenation what vegetable oils contains they contain unsaturated carbon chain unsaturated carbon chain whereas once the hydrogen is added to these unsaturated carbon chain we will get the saturated carbon chain that is vegetable fats they contain saturated this reaction of converting vegetable oils into vegetable fats require hydrogenation means we are adding hydrogen to this unsaturated carbon chain because vegetable oils contain double bond that is unsaturated carbon chain double or triple bond yes and we say that example for the vegetable fat may be dalda have you seen dalda it is prepared from vegetable oils vegetable oils can be sunflower oil it may be flaxseed oil anything when these are hydrogenated we will get the vegetable fats and we say that these vegetable fats are harmful for health these vegetable oils are suitable for cooking purpose and also animal fats also contain the saturated carbon chain they are not that much good for health so vegetable oils are preferred for cooking and dalda is not at all preferred for cooking purposes because it is harmful for health the next type of reaction is substitution reaction here the name itself indicates substitution which means we are substituting some atoms by some other atoms in case of hydrocarbons the hydrogens that are attached to the carbon they can be replaced by some other atoms in saturated hydrocarbons one or more hydrogen atoms attached to carbon can be replaced by some other atoms or group of atoms such type of reactions are called as substitution reaction whenever the hydrogen atoms that are attached to carbon atom can be replaced by some other atoms then we call such reactions as substitution reaction yes let us take an example here usually what happens usually what happens the hydrocarbons that is saturated hydrocarbons they are not that much reactive but when these hydrocarbons they are made to react with chlorine in the presence of sunlight they undergo substitution reaction easily for example this is methane when it is made to react with chlorine in the presence of sunlight it undergo substitution reaction means one hydrogen atom of this methane molecule is replaced by the chlorine atom so we get ch3cl plus hcl and again if you carry out the reaction further if you leave the reaction in the sunlight only if you leave the reaction mixture in the sunlight only all these hydrogen atoms are replaced by the chlorine atoms the reaction may also be proceeded as C when ch3cl again it is made to react with chlorine it undergo further substitution to form dichloromethane again the these two hydrogen atoms can also be replaced in the presence of sunlight to form trichloromethane and at last all the hydrocarbons are replaced by the chlorine atoms to form tetrachloromethane this is also called as chloroform chcl3 is also called as chloroform okay in this way the substitution reaction takes place in methane means the hydrogen atom attached to the carbon is replaced by the chlorine atom okay this is the substitution reaction now we are going to discuss about some important compounds of carbon the first important carbon compound that we are going to discuss is ethanol it has the formula ch3 ch2 oh it is alcoholic group so it belongs to alcohols as the name indicates eth means it consists of two carbon atoms here 
Okay, let's study about this compound. How it is? How does ethanol looks? It is a colorless liquid. And in general terms, it is also called as alcohol. Simply, this is called as alcohol. Because it is the main ingredient that is used in alcoholic drinks. Whatever the alcoholic drinks that are available in market, they are made from this ethanol only. The diluted form of ethanol is present in those alcoholic drinks. And this ethanol is not consumed directly. The pure ethanol is very very dangerous to drink. Sometimes it will cause death of a person even if small amount of this ethanol is consumed in pure form. So whatever the ethanol that is available in the market, it is diluted one okay those alcoholic drinks contains diluted ethanol and coming to its properties it has low melting and boiling point and it is soluble in water it is very easily soluble in water and we know that direct consumption of absolute alcohol means pure ethanol it is lethal means it can cause death of a person then consumption of dilute alcohol can cause drunkenness Nowadays, we see the people who are addicted to this alcohol. Even they drink dilute alcohol, it will cause very serious health problems. It can cause habit. This alcohol is habit forming. So, it is never recommended to consume the alcohol as it has many bad effects on our health. And dilute alcohol consumption has many harmful effects on health. Means, long term consumption of this alcohol that is diluted alcohol has serious health effects so it is never recommended to consume the alcohol and coming to its uh, commercial importance it is a very good industrial solvent industrially it is used as a solvent and in also the laboratories it is a very good reagent as it can dissolve many compounds in it now let's see the uses of this ethanol. As discussed, it is a important, it is an important industrial solvent. So, it can dissolve many compounds in it. It is used in alcoholic drinks. The diluted ethanol is present in alcoholic drinks. It is used as laboratory reagent. For making many reactions, we are using this ethanol. And it is also used in medicine like tincture of iodine, cough syrups and many tonics. You might have seen cough syrup contain small amount of ethanol in it. Because of which we will feel drowsiness when we take cough syrups. Yes, it is used in such medicines. And also commercially it is used in the manufacture of paints, rubber, perfumes, sanitizers, dyes and many more products this ethanol is used so it is a very important compound then what are the harmful effects of this alcohol consumption what happens when a person is addicted to alcohol when large quantities of alcohol are consumed it slows down metabolic process and depresses central nervous system when alcohol is consumed in large amount it directly affects our central nervous system it is a depressant because of which there is a lack of coordination and there is mental confusion and also the person will suffer from drowsiness. Whenever this is consumed in larger amount, it will cause the lack of coordination and also at that time the person will lose his sense of judgment. These are all the ill effects of consuming alcohol. And the person will not come to know what to talk, how to walk, how to behave. Because his central nervous system is depressed once it is consumed in larger amounts. Yes, and also mu muscular coordination is seriously impaired. And even small amount of alcohol can show fatty changes in liver. Long term effect is hepatitis and irreversible damage to liver. If this alcohol is consumed for a long duration of time, it will directly damage to the liver. We know that liver is a very important organ. It is a detoxicating organ as we all know. Once this liver is toxin, means when it, this liver has damaged, 
even small amount of alcohol can show fatty changes in liver long term effect is hepatitis and irreversible damage to liver when this alcohol is consumed for a long duration of time it will directly affect the liver we know that liver is very important organ and it helps in detoxification once this liver is damaged it will affect other organs also and in order to avoid the misuse of this alcohol in the industrial level what they do is they will denature the alcohol the alcohol is denatured denatured means they are going to add some poisonous substance to this alcohol so that people will not consume it in the industries the substance that is added is methanol methanol is also an alcohol even when it is consumed in very small amount it can cause death it can cause death what happens is when this methanol is when this methanol reaches liver there it is converted into methanol methanol is aldehyde yes methanol when it reaches liver it is converted into methanol and this methanol will coagulate the protoplasm in our body it will coagulates when this protoplasm is coagulated the person will die yes you can imagine when egg is boiled what happens the inner part will get solidified yes it is coagulated in the same way the protoplasm present in our body will also get coagulated when methanol is formed in the liver so it will cause death of a person so alcohol is made denatured by adding small amount of methanol to it yes by adding methanol not methanol methanol by adding methanol to it it is denatured so overall we have learned the harmful effects of this alcohol consumption so it is never recommended to have the alcohol now let's discuss about its chemical properties first is reaction with sodium that is how ethanol reacts with sodium when ethanol is made to react with sodium it forms sodium ethoxide and hydrogen gas is liberated what it is it is sodium ethoxide and this h is given out as hydrogen and the na will form bond here what happens here ethanol reacts with the metal sodium to form sodium ethoxide with the liberation of hydrogen you can balance the equation so sodium so ethanol reacts with sodium to form sodium ethoxide and there is a brisk effervescence of hydrogen gas that is formed okay and the next reaction is with concentrated sulfuric acid when ethanol is heated in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid at 443 kelvin then dehydration takes place here what happens there is a removal of water molecule here resulting in the formation of ethene here we are converting alcohol to alkenes this is one of the methods that we use for production of alkenes yes what happens here this oh group and this h atom will be removed as a water molecule resulting in the double bond between these two carbon atoms we know that carbon should have valency 4 means it should have bonds that is 4 so the double bond will form between these two carbon atom and with the removal of the water molecule this oh and this h they are removed as water molecule okay this is how alcohols are converted into alkene it is alcohol and it is alkene so ethanol is converted into ethene ethanol is converted into ethene and this reaction is also called as dehydration reaction why there is a removal of water molecule here so this is also called as dehydration and this concentrated hqso4 acts as dehydrating agent because it removes the water molecule now the next compound that we are going to study is ethanoic acid what is the formula for this ch3coooh it belongs to the group of carboxylic acids 
and we know that carboxylic acid group is this this is a carboxylic acid group as it contains two carbon atoms it is called as ethanoic acid okay commonly it is called as acetic acid and it belongs to the carboxylic acids group i 5 to 8% solution of this acetic acid in water is used as vinegar whatever the vinegar that we use in our kitchen it is made up of 5 to 8% of this ethanoic acid in water and remember this ethanoic acid is also called as acetic acid the common name of this ethanoic acid is acetic acid when we make a solution of this acetic acid that is about 5 to 8% of this acetic acid in water we get vinegar where we use vinegar it is used in the fast food restaurants to make the food very tasty and also in preserving pickles and in and in preparation of food preparation of specially fast foods this vinegar is added a very small amount of vinegar will enhance the taste of food when it is added and also in preservation of pickles okay the melting point of pure ethanoic acid is 290 kelvin it is very less temperature so it often freezes in winter as we know that in winter the temperature is less even that temperature is sufficient for the solidification of this ethanoic acid so it is also called as glacial acetic acid because it freezes even at room temperature in winter season it is called as glacial acetic acid okay it is sour in taste as you know it is acidic in nature because of which it is sour in taste and it is miscible in water this is acidic in nature and unlike mineral acids which are completely ionized acetic acid is a weak acid even though it is having acidic character it will turn blue litmus to red color but even though this is weak acid it will not completely ionize to form h plus ions whereas in case of mineral acid we have studied that they have given they used to give complete ionization to form h plus ions whereas this is a weak acid this is about the properties of this ethanoic acid okay now we are going to discuss about the reactions of acetic acid that is first one is esterification reaction esterification reaction means it is formation of ester because of which we call it as esterification reaction how it is formed between the reaction of alcohol and carboxylic acid it results in the formation of ester now we are going to see what is ester when there is reaction between carboxylic acid and alcohol it takes place in the presence of acid to form ester how it is formed the hydrogen atom of this carboxylic acid and the oh group of this ethanol they are removed in the form of water molecule and the resulting compound that is formed is called as ester it is acetic acid it is ethanol or you can also call it as ethanoic acid and this ester formed is called as ethyl ethanoate this compounds these type of compounds are called as esters okay they have general formula r c o o r when the structure of the formula is like this we call those compounds as esters okay the main important characteristics of these esters have these have a very fruity smell means they have pleasant smell because of which these esters are used in the perfumes it can also be written as ch3 co o c2 h5 in this form also you can write this product okay now we have got ester from acetic acid and ethanol and this reverse reaction is also possible for this forward reaction we have added acid if we add base to this compounds what happens there is again the formation of ethanol and salt of the acetic acid let's see how it happens 
when this is made to react with base that is sodium hydroxide what happens we get sodium salt of acetic acid and ethyl alcohol that is ethanol we have reversed this reaction initially by using acetic acid and ethanol we were getting ester when this ester is treated with sodium hydroxide we are getting again alcohol and sodium salt of the carboxylic acid it is nothing but sodium salt of this acid it is sodium acetate it is called as sodium acetate so the reaction reverses once so the re so the reverse reaction is seen when sodium hydroxide is added to the ester here okay this reaction is called as saponification reaction what it is called it is called as saponification reaction what you are seeing here sodium acetate that is sodium salt of the carboxylic acid how it has obtained it has obtained from the carboxylic acid and this reaction is called as saponification reaction because it is used in the preparation of soaps in the preparation of soaps we use these reactions okay it is sodium salt of carboxylic acid remember this we are going to study the soaps and detergents in the next part only now the second type of reaction of ethanoic acid is reaction with base as we know this is a base this is an acid when it reacts with base it forms salt and water so the salt formed is sodium acetate and there is formation of water here it is sodium acetate what has happened here the h from this ethanoic acid and the oh from this sodium hydroxide is removed as a water molecule then there is a formation of salt here this is a neutralization reaction it is ethanoic acid this is sodium hydroxide resulting in the formation of sodium acetate and water okay now the third type of reaction is the reaction of carboxylic acid that is acetic acid with carbonates and hydrogen carbonate let's see how does the reaction takes place carbonates means you can take sodium carbonate this acetic acid reacts with sodium carbonate to form sodium salt of acetic acid plus carbon dioxide plus water have you seen this type of reaction where we have seen it is in the chapter acid bases and salts where the acids reacts with metal carbonate to form salt carbon dioxide and water yes and also this reacts with metal hydrogen carbonate like sodium hydrogen carbonate to form again sodium salt of acetic acid balance the equation yes this is how the reaction of acetic acid that is ethanoic acid takes place with sodium carbonate and sodium hydrogen carbonate here this reaction can be used to test the acid if you want to distinguish between acid and alcohols you can use these reactions what happens in case of acids there is a liberation of carbon dioxide gas here which can be easily tested using like water if there is liberation of this hydrogen uh, if there is liberation of this carbon dioxide then we can easily say that this is an acid and not an alcohol because alcohol will not give carbon dioxide with this sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate yes this is about the reaction of acetic acid with sodium carbonate and sodium hydrogen carbonates yes now we have come towards the end of this chapter that is we are going to study soaps and detergents each and every one knows about these material what are these these are used for cleaning purposes but chemically how these compounds help in cleaning let us see yes chemically what are these soaps what do they consists of soaps are the sodium or potassium salts of long chain carboxylic acid yes these are the most commonly known soap molecule is sodium stearate it has the formula c17h35 c o o n a 
the hydrocarbon chain consists of 17 carbon atoms so they are usually called as sodium or potassium salts of long chain carboxylic acid okay this is sodium stearate now how do these soap molecules help in cleaning a cloth a dirty cloth let us see it is mainly due to the structure of this soap molecule you can clearly observe here it consists of two part one is a non polar end and other one is polar end you can clearly see here it has two parts one is non polar end other one is polar end this is non polar and this is polar end it is ionic in nature whereas this all the atoms are covalently bonded in this part. Yes. So, it consists of two different parts that is non-polar and polar. And this non-polar as we know it is hydrophobic in nature. It is hydrophobic. Whereas this polar end it is hydrophilic in nature. Hydrophobic means this end dissolves in hydrocarbons only. They will not dissolve in water. This end dissolves in hydrocarbons whereas this hydrophilic end dissolves in water. So, this structure of the soap molecules is helping in the cleaning action. How? Let us see. This soap molecule can be represented in the form of a tadpole structure like this having head and tail. This head represents the ionic part here and the tail represents the hydrocarbon chain. Yes, it is. This is polar head and this is hydrocarbon chain. Usually, the dirty cloths consists of dirt in the form of oil or grease or fat. Yes, suppose this is a surface of the cloth here and it consists of dirt in the form of oil or grease. Now, in order to remove this oil or grease, it is not possible simply by adding water because this oil or dirt, it is insoluble in water. So, it is not that much easy to remove this part. To make the cleaning, it is not easy simply by adding water. So, once we add soap on the surface, that is once we rinse this surface with the soap, what happens? Let us see. In the soap water, there are soap molecules. The hydrophobic end of this soap molecules, they are soluble in hydrocarbons, that is oil or grease. So, these ends will react with this oil or dirt that is present on the surface. There will be more number of such soap molecules and among all those soap molecules, the hydrophobic end will interact with the oil. This results in the formation of clusters. What happens? This oil or a dirt particle around this there are large number of such soap molecules interacting so that hydrophobic end are towards the oil in this way and this hydrophilic end is interacting with the water means it is present in water and this is interacting this end is interacting with the dirt. This results in the cluster formation like this. All these hydrophobic end, they are interacting with the oil or dirt that is present on cloth and the hydrophilic end is into the water. It is interacting with the water and this formation of cluster is called as micelle. It is called as micelle formation and in the same way, there are many number of these micelle structures are formed. At the center of these micelles, there is a presence of the oil or dirt particle here. So, once you rinse the cloth, once you agitate the cloths, what happens? These clusters will come out of the cloth and get dissolved in the water. They will be into the water and come out of this cloth there. This is how the cleansing action of soap actually takes place. Okay, what has happened? The dirt that is present on the cloth, it is interacting means the hydrophobic end of the soap molecule is interacting with this dirt part and hydrophilic end is into the water. And large 
to the soap molecules they are surrounding the dirt the hydrophobic end it is interacting with this oil droplet or the oil or grease which results in the micelle formation once the cloths are agitated these micelles will come out of the cloth and remain in the water which can be removed easily this is how cleansing action of the soap takes place yes and one more thing here question arises whether soaps are useful in any kind of water that is in case of hard water also it shows its cleansing action yes it is true but the cleaning action is not that much efficient in case of hard water in case of hard water what happens there is presence of ions such as calcium or magnesium in this way there is presence of these ions in hard water and these ions they will interact with the polar end of this soap molecule and they form the insoluble substance they form the insoluble substance called as scum whenever we apply soap in hard water the hard water that contain calcium and magnesium ions they will form the insoluble substance by interacting with the polar end of the soap molecule resulting in the formation of scum and you go on apply the soap in hard water there is no formation of lather there is no formation of proper micelles there it is due to the formation of that insoluble substance and soaps will also get wasted you go on applying the soaps and there is a formation of that insoluble substance there from the these ions which are present in hard water so soaps will not work efficiently in hard water as there is a formation of scum so because of which the another class of compounds called as detergents are being introduced what are these detergents they are chemically different from that of soap these detergents are the class of compounds which are used in cleaning action even in hard water what do they consists of they are chemically different from that of soaps these are ammonium or sulfonate salts of long chain carboxylic acid yes these are how do they work in hard water as they consists of ammonium or sulfonate salts of long chain carboxylic acid they do not interact and the charged end of these detergents molecule they will not interact with the calcium or magnesium ions present in hard water so they will not form insoluble scum the charged ends of these molecules do not interact with calcium or magnesium salts so they they do not form insoluble scum because of which these detergents because of which these detergents can be efficiently used even in hard water what is the difference between soaps and detergents soaps are the sodium or potassium salts of long chain carboxylic acid whereas detergents are the ammonium or sulfonic salts of long chain carboxylic acid and soaps are not that much strong cleaning agents whereas detergents are strong cleansing agent and also in case of soaps they are not efficiently and in case of soaps they cannot be used in hard water whereas in case of detergents they can be efficiently used in case of hard water also as they do not form insoluble scum and one more important thing soaps are completely biodegradable whereas detergents they are not biodegradable some detergents may be biodegradable but many of the detergents they are not biodegradable this is all about the soaps and detergents